Hey guys, I have another action figure showdown for you and we're going to be looking at Batman 1989 today. So I have the NECA Batman, I have the SH Figure Arts Batman, and then the Mezco Batman. So these are all based on the same exact uh, Batman from the 1989 film. Like with the Spider-Man one, uh, we're going to be taking a look at the costume design. We're going to be looking at the articulation of each figure as well as the accessories and anything else that might make it unique. So stick around and we're going to get right into it. Here we have three 1989 Batman figures. We have the NECA, we have the SH Figure Arts, and the Mezco Batman. The NECA retailed for $19.99. The SH Figure Arts is about $70, and the Mezco retailed for $110. And at the very end, I'm also going to go over the current pricing of each of these so that we can get a really good idea of kind of where the value lies uh, with it now that you have to buy pretty much all these on the aftermarket rather than buying them at retail. If we're talking about costume design, uh, I would say overall it's generally okay. I think you can see that we have the glossy uh, gauntlets and the glossy boots and uh, to me that is problematic because the costume should really be all of this same kind of matte looking color. I also think that the colors of the belt are just a little bit off but the yellow on the symbol I think is pretty spot on. So we do have the blades on the gauntlet and that looks good. Uh, I do remember the gauntlets having like kind of the lines in there like that. I think the boots, besides the color, look uh, actually fairly accurate. So uh, happy about that. Cape is a pretty obvious thing that isn't very accurate looking. Uh, there's only so much you can do about it considering the scale and the price. The cowl does look good overall. Uh, it does look a little bit different than the rest of the body in terms of like the sheen. Uh, this one has none at all and then the rest of the body has a slight sheen to it. Not too bad, but it is somewhat noticeable. Although I would say it's not as glaring as the gauntlets and the boots being glossy. As far as the head design, I think that looks really good. I do feel like that looks uh, quite a bit like Michael Keaton. You know, the, the lips and the lines around the mouth. And I would even say that the color that they painted the lips actually looks really good. Obviously, we can't take off the mask to really see how it fully looks, but they weren't intending on that coming off anyway. So it's really the mouth that we're looking to see how uh, closely that comes to the uh, original actor. So overall, a pretty good likeness. I think that the a problem with the glossiness of the gauntlets and the boots are actually reasonably fixable if you were to paint them. But because of the strong likeness to the actor uh, himself, I would actually give this a, a pretty solid 7 or possibly 8 out of 10. Next up, we have our SH Figure Arts Batman. And our cape is really interesting because of how thick it is. It's a definite like pleather material which while it looks nice, the problem is that it, it just kind of sits out. It's kind of big rather than draping straight down, which is kind of how it should look. Otherwise, uh, it does have these poles in here so that if you wanted to have them hold them out, then you could, and they can otherwise just come out. That way you don't need to have them in there all the time. In terms of the actual costume design itself, uh, it is uh, fairly strong. Everything does look good and right. I think we have a similar kind of glossiness concern that the NECA one had, with the boots at least. The gauntlets look perfect in terms of the, the gloss. Like with the NECA, we do have the lines here, that looks good. And then we have the blades here too. And they're a lot more prominent than on the NECA, which is really nice. That belt looks really, really good. The issue I see with the chest are the uh, design of the pecs, because I don't think it actually is supposed to be split apart right in the middle like that. I'm pretty sure it is supposed to be joined together uh, like you'll see with the Mezco and like we did see with the NECA one already. Uh, otherwise, it does look uh, pretty good and pretty close to what we do see on screen. Finally, the head. So it's... It's okay. I, I think it could be uh, quite a lot better, especially considering how expensive it is versus the NECA in terms of its retail cost. The mouth is okay. The paint kind of sucks on the lips. The paint on the eyes isn't very good either. You can kind of tell that the eyes are there, but it also almost looks like it just kind of got messed up. But it kind of looks like they were like printed on like with a printer, uh, which is kind of weird. And, and even then, like the color seems wrong it looks like they gave him blue eyes not a big fan of that otherwise the cowl itself looks fine 
due to the weak likeness of the actor, the uh, chest not being great, and the cape also being kind of goofy because it doesn't even at least drape down correctly. I would give this a pretty solid six and a half to seven. And finally, we have the Mezco. So uh, I do go into quite a bit of depth on my review of it. So if you haven't watched that, then please check that out. Uh, otherwise, I'd say it does look very very good overall we see that it doesn't have the weird split at the chest the way that the uh, figure arts one does the design of the actual uh, costume the gauntlet uh, lines are there it's not glossy on there uh, it's a little bit glossy on the boots uh, but not too bad I i'd say not too bad at all the cape is okay i i did mention in my review that i'm not super happy about the cape but it's uh, I would say definitely loads better than uh, the other two, for sure. One of my big issues is because it's made of actual rubber, it's not fully smooth the way that the other two are. So in terms of like the texture of the suit, this is not great. The other problem that I have is that it's more of a gray than a black. However, uh, I have been uh, made uh, aware that it is possible to uh, use a rubber polish, which will then make it black. The black that would match this and match the gauntlets really well. So I might make a video on that. And if that sounds interesting, then definitely let me know in the comments. But because that is true, it's not too bad, but I, it also kind of sucks that uh, we would even have to go out of our way to do that, right? Because we want the figure to already be good. We don't want to have to put additional uh, effort, time and money into it, especially if we're spending, you know, 110 plus dollars. But otherwise, in terms of costume design, it does look pretty good overall. And I would say we have a super, super strong likeness to Michael Keaton. You can see like with the NECA, the mouth has that kind of the purse lip thing with the lines around the side as well. Uh, really good coloring, everything that they uh, decided uh, looks really good about with that. So if I were to give a rating to the Mezco Batman in terms of costume design, I would give this a solid eight and a half. It looks just like Michael Keaton. The actual design of the body looks great. The cape isn't great. And you know, like I said, it is kind of gray. So here's a side by side by side with all three together. Um, I am actually holding this one up a little bit and I bent this one down a bit just so I can get them side by side but here's a, a better look on how they all look. Time to talk articulation. So as I mentioned, the neck articulation is generally very limited and you can see that with, with the knee only having uh, a single bend, not a double joint. And even then it's not even a full 90 degrees. It's more like, I mean, if you're trying to give them a walking pose, that would be fine. Uh, but even a sitting one, like in a chair, it's, not too bad but it, it could be a lot better because it looks more like he's kind of uh, squatting as opposed to sitting in a chair my other uh, problem with that though is that i do want to mention that it does have the mcfarland diaper problem uh, oftentimes when i am uh, bending this one and i am doing it a lot because i use this one in my uh, batmobile it gets bent up like that and i actually needed to run this under hot water uh, just so it would bend back to shape so i could record this video but like i said the arms can also only go about 90 degrees so we can't go further up than that surprisingly uh, thankfully we at least do have some uh, gauntlet articulation or forearm articulation the hands uh, they can go around and they can kind of go back and forth just a bit but because of how far it is in there it can only go so far it does actually have some level of ab crunch and we can bend it about that much um, so it kind of just looks like he hurt his back and is walking funny. But then even when you bend it like that, you see this problem, right? So either it would be over the belt or it might be behind the belt, but if it goes behind the belt, then it's only going to go so far down, which then also prevents you from being able to bend him over. No proper bicep swivel, but the elbow does bend, giving you sort of bicep swivel, but that's a little weird too and his head so while technically it can move left and right you'll see that the whole you know bat symbol and the cowl moves along with him but that's actually accurate to the costume and i'm not gonna knock points off for that but i just wanted you to know that that's how that looks ankle so this one uh, surprisingly you can go around uh, you can tilt it a bit as well and you do get a bit of up and down. While it does have a decent number of articulation points, the amount it can actually articulate is 
not that great. For me, because I use this in the Batmobile, I don't need a lot of articulation for it. But if this was gonna be my main Batman, then I probably wouldn't be very happy. So with that in mind, I'd give this a five, maybe five and a half out of 10 for articulation. Articulation for our figure art. So the thing about SH figure arts is they are actually uh, usually very well known for their articulation. If you didn't already see, uh, the belt did kind of pop off a little bit. That's happened to me a couple times. Um, but it's kind of, you just pop it back on and that's fine. Starting from the bottom, we do have double jointed knees. Can't get all the way to the butt, but that's okay. Still a much better articulation experience than the NECA. And let's see here. We don't have a boot swivel, uh, but we do have ankle tilt and we can go up and down and we can go a bit side to side. But thankfully, uh, we do have some hip articulation. So it does drop like that. And you can turn it a bit in and out like that. And otherwise, if we wanted it in a seated position, I think you can already see where this is going. He could sit reasonably well in a chair. I mean, besides the cape getting in the way. So moving up the body, we do have some waist articulation so we can twist a bit i think it's the belt that's kind of getting in the way of allowing it to twist even more but we do get some and then our chest you can already see that uh, we're going to be able to move that around a decent amount that's super solid in terms of how much articulation you get out of that with our arms we're not getting quite a double jointed elbow um, however, we are at least getting it high enough to get a 45 degree elbow, which is pretty solid. It's still much better than the NECA one as well. And then with our hands, we can turn and it does have the ability to uh, go up and down if you get it in the right angle. And I'm not always great about getting it in the right angle, but there you go. We also do not have bicep swivel in this one. Not that I think that we necessarily need to have it, but I just want you to see that we don't. Although similar to the NECA, it does twist at the elbow. So you kind of get it in that way. And finally, our head uh, slash neck articulation. Um, this one cannot turn at all. I think you would probably have to pop it off in order to turn it. But again, like I said, uh, no points off for that one because that is accurate to the original costume and movie itself where he has to turn his whole body in order to turn left or right. In terms of articulation, I would give this a solid seven. The double jointed knees go a long way. And finally, our Mezco Batman articulation. For this one, I'm gonna take the cape off because it's actually really easy. If you don't know, the head is just held on with a magnet. So super easy there. Again, if you don't know, there's actually a metal skeleton inside of this thing, uh, which is both uh, really amazing uh, in terms of, you know, engineering, but also a little frustrating at times. It can be hard to move and because it's covered in rubber, it's a little bit scary to move too, right? Because you don't want to break anything. And even in their FAQ, they actually warn you to be careful of uh, going too far and, you know, pushing too hard because you might accidentally break something. Otherwise, uh, it has quite a lot of good articulation, as long as you're not too scared to do it. And I'm actually pretty scared to do it because I don't want to break my very expensive action figure. There he is in a seated position, pretty solid there. And then starting with our feet, we do have boot swivel. We also get foot swivel, which is nice. We also get uh, ankle tilt and of course, back and forward. You saw it pretty much has full articulation uh, on both sides. And then of course we do have plenty of ab movement and crunch. Let's move them forward. So we can move them forward pretty good. We can get them into a full on splits. What's also interesting that uh, we actually have kind of a knee swivel because while he can bend like that, then I can also turn it like that. So more articulation points. We probably have double jointed elbows in there, but uh, again, we can't see inside, so we can't say for sure. However, uh, we can get a nice 45, but then it gets stopped by his super swole rubber muscles. And uh, similar to the other two um, and similar to our knee, we can do that 
get our bicep swivel. And because it's all a single piece, it doesn't look too bad. And because this head is on a magnet, you could technically move it, but again, the symbol moves too, so then it looks kind of weird. So while the Mezco one does have a ton of articulation points, the problem that I have is actually the fact that it's actually difficult to move and because it is so difficult to move and because of you know the warnings that Mezco gives us, I'm kind of afraid to articulate it because uh, I don't want to break anything. So with that in mind, I would give this an eight out of 10. Um, it would be higher if it moved a little bit easier or if I had more confidence in being able to move it without breaking anything. And to be fair to Mezco, they do say that, you know, as you continue to uh, articulate and play with it, that it should loosen up a bit, but Again, I don't want to break my hundred plus dollar action figure. Accessory time. So with our NECA Batman, we only have four total accessories. And we have a couple of hands. We have a gripping hand and then a holding hand, holding for the battering. Speaking of the battering, here's the battering itself. And then that's one side of it. Here's the other side, which has more detail on it. And then we have his infamous grappling gun with a pretty nice paint job on it. It's nice that they even painted the silver bolts on there, but that's really it. It's kind of a bummer, but again, at a retail of about 20 bucks, that's not terrible either. I would give this a five out of 10 because it's a mix of alternate hands and at least we get a grappling gun and a battering. So it's, it's a good variety. For our figure arts accessories, we have a pretty decent number. So uh, right off the bat, <laughs> you can see that we have an alternate head. However, I can barely tell what the difference between this head and the original head is at all, but at least we have one. And then we've got a couple of uh, shurikens. We have a battering grappling gun, a slew of other hands and then the this really large grappling gun that he uses uh, when he saves Vicky from the Joker. So by default, he has the fists on. Our first hand is a hand that would be for holding the grappling gun. And then we've got these two, which are likely for holding onto the pole so that he can hold the cape out. Then we've got another set of holding hands, but as you can see, these are angled. I wanna say these are probably for holding the battering or maybe even the, the shurikens. We have a couple of nice open hands or uh, fighting pose hands. And I really like these hands. These are just absolutely ridiculous hands. This is for that scene where he stops the martial artist guy uh, by having this very specific thing uh, pop out from his wrist to stop him. So that's neat that we have that one. Here is a close-up of the heads. It looks like the difference is the mouth is a little bit open and the eyes are looking to his right. Weird, but okay. I think I probably would have preferred had they made like the mouth detachable and they gave us a bunch of different mouths to use. Maybe a screaming mouth and a smiling mouth, etc. But that's fine. So in terms of ranking the accessories, I would give this a eight out of 10. I think we got a lot of different nice hands. Gives us a lot of different posing options. We have, uh, you know, some shurikens. We have the grappling gun we have the battering so a bunch of stuff and then of course the alternate head too so i think a, a nice big chunk of different accessories for our mezco batman we have just a crazy amount of accessories i did go into much more depth in my video review so please check that out but a quick overview you can see that we have a really nice stand and then we have an extra cape in here we have the larger grappling gun there uh, battering with rope we have remote to control the Batmobile, three alternate heads. We have six hands here, four batterings, shuriken, smoke bomb, time bomb, grappling gun, a grappling hook for the grappling gun, unfolded grappling gun a hook again, tons and tons and tons of accessories. So because of that, I would give it a 10 out of 10. I think just the number of accessories we get is just uh, crazy and amazing. And I really, really appreciate that about the Mesco, especially considering the cost. Here are all three grappling guns. So, uh, you can see that they all generally have the same shape. However, the NECA one has some extra pieces on it. I wonder if they were combining the look of the folded version of the grappling gun with the grappling gun or something like that. I'm not totally sure, but uh, it definitely does not have this on the other two. 
The figure arts one does look good, but it doesn't even have as much uh, paint detail as the NECA one, which is kind of funny. Although at least we do have the silver painted on the backside, so that's nice. And then of course the Mezco one is the ultimate one because we have the folded version that I just showed you a second ago, and then the fully uh, unfolded version. But we don't have the silver back, although that might be because I think I want to say that there are a couple different versions, some with silver, some without, in terms of actual movie props. So kind of depending on which one you want, um, you know, that's what you'll get. But there's a bit of silver painted there. However, we don't have silver painted on the top side. But uh, like I said, that might actually even be a different prop kind of thing. So uh, otherwise, design-wise, they are all generally the same. Um, but I do appreciate that the grappling hook is not uh, attached to this one and so you can have the hook attached or the hook with the wire attached to replicate the scenes that you want. And for a bit of comparison, here's the NECA replica of the grappling gun. And as you can see, it is uh, folded in. So all I'd have to do is pull out the handle and that's how you would grip it. Here are our batterings. This one is the NECA one. And as you can see, we do have the bit of silver on the tips as expected. However, on the backside, it's just flat. And then with our SH Figure Arts one, the design does remain the same. However, we don't have any silver on the tips, but we do at least have a full design on the back as well. And then with our Mezco, we do have a bit of silver on the tips and the design on the back. But what's interesting to me is that the Mezco is actually smaller than the Figure Arts one, even though physically the Figure Arts one is smaller than the Mezco one. Weird, but okay. And then for a sake of comparison, here is the NECA replica of the battery ring. So you can see the silver uh, on the tips as it should be. And the design on both sides. Finally, I want to look at the larger grappling gun. So on the left hand side uh, is the figure arts. On the right hand side is the Mezco one. And design wise, they look fairly close. Uh, only some minor differences you can see on the figure arts. We have these six uh, nubs or buttons or whatever they might be on the right hand side. On the Mezco, we have just the four. And otherwise, they do look pretty much exactly the same. So that would be easy to get confused. And of course, on both of them, the, um, these parts do move out as expected. Although I would say that the figure arts one is a little loose compared to the Mezco one. The Mezco one is pretty solid. Unfortunately, I don't have a replica of this, but if, uh, if there is one, I definitely would have bought it. So, so for our reference, here's our McFarlane Batman next to our NECA Batman. Our figure arts Batman next to McFarlane Batman. And finally, our Mezco Batman next to our McFarlane Batman. So as a reminder, our NECA costs at retail about 20 bucks, Figure Arts is about 70, and the Mezco is at about 110. But currently on the aftermarket, AKA eBay, the NECA, uh, you're looking at about 100 bucks sealed or around 60 loose. Figure Arts is about $100 plus, and then the Mezco we're looking at about $180. Uh, if you're asking my opinion, I would actually say it's not worth getting either the uh, NECA or the figure arts because of the cost compared to the articulation, the accessories, etc. Mezco really does kind of give you all of it, even with its faults. It's a very, very good figure. Um, even at 180 bucks, if you're spending 100 um, for that one and getting a cape, which is 20 bucks, you're already looking at 120 bucks. So for another 60, you get a crazy amount of accessories, much better articulation. Um, and so on and so forth. So I, I can't recommend uh, those two unless you're going to get some kind of really, really good deal on them. And even then, if you're choosing between these two, I would probably still maybe even go with the NECA one over this one. I, I prefer the proportions on this one, uh, even if it's got weaker accessories and articulation. I think it looks better overall compared to the figure arts one. The figure arts one head isn't so great. Um, the way the eyes came out, the mouth, the the skin color of the mouth is also a little bit weird too. And if you are looking at getting the NECA Batman, then it might be helpful if you watch my video on the comparison of the NECA versus the knockoff. Uh, and I'll post that right here.